I'm joined today by Brett Jones, who's a former Navy SEAL currently living in Alabama, where he and his husband run a business together. Brett, I've been really researching and reading about your story over the last couple of days, getting ready for our interview, and there's so many interesting elements to it. Let's maybe start at when you uh, first had the idea that you might want to get into the military. Okay. So tell us about that. Well, uh, I remember I was uh, living in Egypt at the time, and I overheard a conversation between my father and my brother. And my father at the time was a colonel in the Air Force, and uh, he was an ambassador's aide uh, there at the embassy in Cairo. And he uh, came back and told the story about how he wasn't even allowed to see these guys called Navy SEALs. And, you know, at the time, he really didn't know a whole lot about them. He had heard of them in Vietnam. And uh, for some reason, that uh, uh, planted a seed in me that uh, it was just neat that, you know, even my dad wasn't allowed to see them or know who they were. And what year did you finally join up? I joined the Navy in 1993. And then what was the path from joining the Navy until you were ultimately part of the Navy SEALs? Well, it was, uh, it was a path kind of riddled with a lot of obstacles. Uh, I went through, uh, I joined the Navy, went through boot camp, and, uh, and then uh, my A school, and then from there I went to uh, BUDS, which is the, uh, p the precursor for SEAL training. Uh, and uh, I didn't make it through my first time. Uh, I went to Iceland as a uh, Navy policeman, did that for a while, and worked really hard to, to be able to get the opportunity to try uh, to become a SEAL again. And uh, the second time I went through, I made it, and uh, that was uh, pretty much the path to, to get me. You know, obviously, I get to your, you get to your SEAL team, and uh, you still have about six months' worth of training and advanced training to do before you become a SEAL. But that initial uh, six months of buzz training is the toughest. So in the background of all this, of course, there's your sexuality. And you, you, of course, had to have been aware of what the policy was in the military back in 1993. What impact or how did that kind of interface with your desires to be in the military? Is that something you thought about? Yeah, I definitely thought about it. You know, uh, when I joined, they had the, the don't ask, don't tell policy was sort of new. Yeah. And uh, I... I you know, I knew instinctively at the time that it, it was kind of a load of crap. So uh, it, I just knew going in that I was going to have to uh, I was going to have to do a lot of lying. And is that what it was? Was it, you know, some people talk about their experience in the military under Don't Ask, Don't Tell as being more, uh, I guess, Don't Ask, Don't Tell in the sense that they didn't directly feel that they had to lie. They kind of fell out of place when there may have been conversations where they may not necessarily have felt included based on their sexuality, but the direct lying wasn't really a part of it. But for you, it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it definitely was. See, the thing is, is, is the SEAL team community is a very tight knit community. Uh, there's not very many of us. And so uh, you spend a lot of time in, in a, that very small environment. It's, it gets very <laughs> difficult to keep. Uh, you know, a lie like that or a secret like that uh, from from the guys you work with. And what so, kinds of situations would there be where you just had to just lie? Well, I remember they kept a lot of the guys kept asking me, you know, about, uh, uh, you know, any girlfriends or anything like that. And I remember it got so bad that at one point uh, a friend of mine uh, actually posed as my girlfriend uh, to a couple of the, the you know, get togethers that we had in the SEAL teams. So this wasn't in pictures. This was she actually would show up places with you. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it was like a comedy. It was well, probably a comedy of errors more than anything. But, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I can understand why there's this kind of funny element of it looking back, but at the time, w was that difficult for you? It was. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, just like anybody, you know, you don't want to, especially to those guys that, I mean, we were so close, we were like brothers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, lying to them just, it was a, it was a terrible thing. It made me feel really bad that I would ever do that to them. And, uh, and I'm guessing it wouldn't have been necessarily your choice, right? I mean, you did you feel that this is just the way it had to be because of the policy? Oh, it, it definitely had to be that way. The, the don't ask, don't tell policy. It was a, uh, it was a, a, a don't get caught 
policy is all it really was. It, it was uh, it was a nightmare. I mean, it was a mess. Were you were you out to your family at the time that you joined the Navy? I was. I you, was. You, and what was that experience like? In other words, was that um, is that something that you you did uh, right away, or what was the timeline of that like? I came out. Uh, I, I was sort of outed. Uh, my mom overheard a phone call that I had uh, with a friend of mine who was gay uh, when I was, I believe, 17. Uh, I was fairly young, uh, and it didn't go well. It, my, like I said, my father was a, a you know, colonel in the Air Force, and you know, they were very religious, so mm. they felt very strongly against it. And uh, yeah, it just it wasn't a very good coming out. In fact, I got kicked out of my house. And then ultimately, were you allowed back in? What was that? What was that period of time like? Uh, it was tough. It was uh, it was probably one of the most toughest times of my life. Uh, you know, there was uh, a lot of heavy thinking after I got kicked out of the the house. And uh, uh, you know, I did eventually move back in with my parents just uh, prior to to me joining the Navy. Uh, but it was uh, it, it was tough. It was. I learned a lot, though. You know, it wasn't all bad. You know, I think in any situation where where bad things sort of happen to a person, you kind of grow and learn from it and become a little bit stronger. Now, since your dad was in the Air Force, he of course must have also been aware of what the policy was. So, were there conversations with him about uh, your potential risk situation? There, I don't, you know, I honestly don't recall a specific conversation. I think it was something the more that we just didn't talk about. In fact, after, you know, after that, you know, getting kicked out of the, the house, we didn't, we didn't talk about my sexuality for years. Hmm. And when you, uh, before leaving the Navy SEALs, had you come out? Yeah, I was, uh, I was forced out of the closet, uh, Let's see, that was uh, 2001, or no, I'm sorry, yeah, 2002, rather. Uh, I just got back from doing a six-month deployment. Uh, we deployed two weeks after 9-11, and I got back, and uh, uh, I was the person I was living with at the time, I was in a relationship with, uh, had this big party for me for, you know, coming back and, you know, being healthy and, you know, all that. And uh, uh, I drank a little bit at that party and then the next day I, you know I woke up and I had realized that before I went to bed that uh, I probably didn't spend as much time with him as I should have instead you know talking with other you know people at the party and I left a, I called his office and left a, a message on the machine and uh, his one of the, the people that worked for him uh, heard that message and it was somebody that he had recently just counseled so uh, she reported it, and um, that was all it took for the Navy to launch a full-scale investigation. Uh, so there so was so so quite literally, there was an investigation into your sexual orientation by the Navy. Yeah, uh, yep, yeah, it lasted for months actually. And it's amazing to me how could it last for months when it seems like it's all about asking you, as absurd as it is, what's your sexual orientation and getting an answer. In other words, why did they need to? What was being investigated? So uh, the don't ask, don't tell policy is just that. It's don't ask, don't tell. So, uh, you know, they're trying to figure out ways to get me to tell. Hmm. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, right when I came back off of the, uh, the deployment, you know, I, I met with the investigator. And, uh, or I'm sorry, actually, I, I went to a, a free fall school and then I came back from that. And uh, that's when I found out about the investigation. And, uh, you know, it was an interrogation. It was about two hours of her trying any which way she could to get me to say that I, I was gay. Fortunately, uh, I got put in touch with the uh, SLDN up in D.C. Uh, just prior to that. So they prepared me for the questions that they were going to ask me and, and the tactics that they were going to use. Can you give us an example of what types of questions they would ask to try to get you to say something? So they had done their research. They found that we had bought a house together and that our, both our names were on the house. And uh, so they would say stuff like that. And somehow they were able to find out about a vacation that we'd even gone on hmm. and, uh, you know, asked, you know, different questions, you know, like, why would you buy a house with, you know, this guy or why would you 
buy plane tickets to travel together to this place or you know it was it was stuff like that and how would you answer those questions uh, I told them that by the direction of the lawyer, I said, I, I don't feel comfortable with that question and I, I need to discuss that with uh, my legal counsel. It, w looking back at all of this now, I mean, what, what's your view on it? What's your view on don't ask, don't tell having been repealed? I mean, how to me, it seems like just uh, a, almost an immoral waste of resources that could be put into so many other things. You know, looking back on it, it, it it's honestly it's it's a really sad part of our history but i'm i'm actually glad that it's it's history now yeah uh but it it it's really sad i remember going to uh to gay bars or or whatever while i was in the navy and i could just see you know somebody that had been uh you know kicked out of the navy for it. this is the thing is getting kicked out of the navy i mean they would try to dishonorably discharge you which is like being a convicted felon in yeah. a lot of states and uh, so, you, I mean, you could just see the shame on some of these people's faces that, uh, you know, you talk to and, and you hear their story. And it, it was horrible. And it, it really is a black eye in our history, I think, just because uh, there were so many people, I believe, you know, like an average of 300 a year in the Navy alone uh, were kicked out under the don't ask, don't tell policy for being gay or, or lesbian or transgender or whatever. And uh, it was... Uh, it's sad because these are people who really just wanted to serve their country. Of and course, of course. We've been, of uh, we've been speaking with Brett Jones. The name of the book is Pride, the story of the first openly gay Navy SEAL. It's from Dog-Eared Publishing. Brett, really a pleasure having you on. Thanks for telling us your story. Thanks for having me on.